this this morning. Anyway, so we're done with chapter seven, really. Uh, the objectives, kind of quick review. Understand the purpose of permanent storage, remembering that hard drives, and really this, this chapter is supposed to be about, not about hard drives, but about permanent storage. But realistically, we don't use DVDs and CDs that much anymore. We, we do use flash drives to a limited extent. Um, but most people anymore, if they want to move something, they put it on the cloud. You know, you, I, I don't know how many people would go, oh, I need a flash drive for that. Although I did just have something the other day and I had to teach how to load something to their Google Drive. Um, but most people who know how to use technology will just load it to their Google Drive and then download it something else, you know. So really when we talk about permanent storage, we're mainly talking about hard drives. So we talked about the three basic different kinds of hard drives that we've got today. Those being the traditional spinny drive, whether it's a two and a half inch for a laptop or three and a half inch for a desktop or a server, because um, they are exactly the same size. And then a laptop size SATA solid state. But then we talked about the NVMe drive, which is the primo top of the line for speed all the different devices. So we talked about those different types of hard drives. We talked about the technologies, those really being for SSD, whether it's SLC, MLC, TLC, or QLC, and how they connect, whether they connect through a SATA cable, which is what most drives all connect through, or through an M.2 port on um, hard drive. Those definitely changing the speeds, because this one we know um, is limited by the PCI bus, can go up to 6,000 um, megabytes per second, whereas the SATA cable is only at 600. So this is all, the connection speed of this is, well, actually some of the newest M.2s are faster than 6,000. They are limited by the, the motherboard itself and how fast it can transfer as opposed to the SATA cable, which is at 600 megabytes. The whole purpose of the hard drive project is to teach you how to select a hard drive. So we kind of, the first part of the, the, the chapter is all of these activities that we went through for the different parts and understanding the basics of these objectives. And then the idea of the hard drive project is to make not, you know, we talked about hard drive connections, but then hope you understand how to select one um, and find one. And that's why I do that particular project on all these projects, because if I just tell you stuff and you never go out to shop for it, then when you wanted to go out to shop for it, it would be a new experience and that's not what I want, right? Uh, and then the last thing is, is how to install a hard drive, which we've done not to an M.2, which honestly is just plug in one screw, but we've done it with our, our uh, drives and our, our machines, which all of them hook up the exact same way. So, We've gone through all that already. You've done the hard drive project. Um, we've got the blog post left, and I know I already checked your your uh, your thing on, on that and actually finished that, but I'm going to talk about the blog post really quickly. Um, just like all the other ones, you've, you've gone through and chosen, uh, in the case of the hard drive project, two different hard drives. Um, you just have to choose one of those to do a blog post about like you bought it like you use it, referencing um, referencing uh, other people's reviews, referencing purchase sites, referencing the uh, manufacturer's website. So somebody who reads that blog post, A, understands everything about the hard drive, and B, walks away from it saying, I would buy this hard drive for this. That's not what I want, so I'm not going to buy it. Or that is what I want, so I'm going to buy it. And again, all we always put the MLA and put the note that this review is a partisan project. And the rubric is linked right there on uh, Moodle as well. Um, the last thing, really, we're going to have the test next class. So this stuff should all be done uh, as of today. You've already elected to skip the blog post um, as your XP expenditure. I've already taken the XP out. I've already put the grade in. Um, in which case, I would like you to try the random counter. This is not required for the fight. This is not a skirmish. Um, this is the first one of these you've done, and the first one I've actually added to Moodle in a long time. So, because you've got nothing else to do today. Although, Mr. Herman, 
may elect to do the blog post. Um, because there's other XP stuff that you may not be able to do later on, but we're in the last quarter. Um, this is a 10 question quiz, but it's different every single time you go into it. It's random. Random 10 questions out of the question bank for chapter seven. So on this, it behooves people to, because it's all a book anyway, right? So it behooves you to look up the answers and take it one time and be done. Because what happens on, on this kind of a, a quiz is that students think, I'll just take it and then I'll look at, see what the answers are and then I'll look them up and then I'll go back. When you go back, the chance of even having one question the same is very low. Because there's 80 questions in the question bank, and there's 10 questions on here, and it randomizes which questions you get in the order. So this is not something, I mean, it'll give you the highest grade, so you can take it as many times as you want. And if you want to take it more often to see what all the questions are that are in the question bank, you certainly can. But this counts in the test category as 20 points. So you don't want to take that and get a zero, because that would hurt your grade. So I would, if you take that, take your time and try to get 100 on it. And then if you want to take it again, again. So that's because you've already skipped that, is what today is. Next class is the fight itself. And then the class after that, we're going to do another breakdown and rebuild before spring break. And that's it. Do you have any questions? Okay.